who are victims of a fallacious appeal to authority. The authority in question must be identified. A common variation of the typical appeal to authority fallacy is an appeal to an unnamed authority. This fallacy is also known as an appeal to an unidentified authority. This fallacy is committed when a person asserts that a claim is true because an expert or authority makes the claim and the person does not actually identify the expert. Since the expert is not named or identified, there is no way to tell if the person is actually an expert. Unless the person is identified and has his expertise established, there is no reason to accept the claim. This sort of reasoning is not unusual. Typically, the person making the argument will say things like I have a book that says dot dot or they say dot dot or the experts say dot dot or scientists believe that dot dot or I read in the paper dot or I saw on TV dot dot or some similar statement. In such cases the person is often hoping that the listener's will simply accept the unidentified source as a legitimate authority and believe the claim being made. If a person accepts the claim simply because they accept the unidentified source as an expert, without good reason to do so, he has fallen prey to this fallacy. As suggested above, not all appeals to authority are fallacious. This is fortunate since people have to rely on experts. This is because no one person can be an expert on everything and people do not have the time or ability to investigate every single claim themselves. In many cases, arguments from authority will be good arguments. For example, when a person goes to a skilled doctor and the doctor tells him that he has a cold, then the, the patient has good reason to accept the doctor's conclusion. As another example, if a person's computer is acting odd and his friend, who is a computer expert, tells him it is probably his hard drive then he has good reason to believe her. What distinguishes a fallacious appeal to authority from a good appeal to authority is that the argument meets the six conditions discussed above. In a good appeal to authority, there is reason to believe the claim because the expert says the claim is true. This is because a person who is a legitimate expert is more likely to be right than wrong when making considered claims within her area of expertise. In a sense, the claim is being accepted because it is reasonable to believe that the expert has tested the claim and found it to be reliable. So, if the expert has found it to be reliable, then it is reasonable to accept it as being true. Thus, the listener is accepting a claim based on the testimony of the expert. It should be noted that even a good appeal to authority is not an exceptionally strong argument. After all, in such cases a claim is being accepted as true simply because a person is asserting that it is true. The person may be an expert, but her expertise does not really bear on the truth of the claim. This is because the expertise of a person does not actually determine whether the claim is true or false. Hence, arguments that deal directly with evidence relating to the claim itself will tend to be stronger. Examples of appeal to authority. Bill and Jane are arguing about the morality of abortion. Bill. I believe that abortion is morally acceptable. After all, a woman should have a right to her own body. Jane. I disagree completely. Doctor. Johannes Kahn says that abortion is always morally wrong, regardless of the situation. He has to be right, after all, he is a respected expert in his field. Bill. I've never heard of Dr. Scan. Who is he? Jane. He asked the guy that won the Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on cold fusion. Bill. I see. 
Does he have any expertise in morality or ethics? Jane. I don't he know. But he is a world famous expert, so I believe him. Dave and Kantaro arguing about Stalin's reign in the Soviet Union. Dave has been arguing that Stalin was a great leader while Kantaro disagrees with him. Kantaro. I don't see how you can consider Stalin to be a great leader. He killed millions of his own people, he crippled the Soviet economy, kept most of the people in fear and laid the foundations for the violence that is occurring in much of Eastern Europe. Dave. Yeah, well you say that. However, I have a book at home that says that Stalin was acting in the best interest of the people. The millions that were killed were vicious enemies of the state and they had to be killed to protect the rest of the peaceful citizens. This book lays it all out, so it has to be true. I am not a doctor, but I play one on the hit series Bimbos and Studmuffins in the OR. You can take it from me that when you need a fast-acting, effective and safe pain killer there is nothing better than Morphe Dope 2000. That is my considered medical opinion. Saifway and Sasha are having a conversation. Sasha. I played the lottery today and I know I am going to win something. Saifway. What did you do, rig the outcome? Sasha. No, silly. I called my super psychic buddy at the 1900 mind power number. After consulting his magic Californian tarot deck, he told me my lucky numbers. Saifway. And you believed him. Sasha. Certainly, he is a certified Californian master mind psychic. That is why I believe what he has to say. I mean, like, who else would know what my lucky numbers are? Fallacy. Appeal to belief. Description of appeal to belief. Appeal to belief is a fallacy that has this general pattern. Most people believe that a claim, X, is true. Therefore X is true. This line of reasoning is fallacious because the fact that many people believe a claim does not, in general, serve as evidence that the claim is true. There are, however, some cases when the fact that many people accept a claim as true is an indication that it is true. For example, while you are visiting Maine, you are told by several people that they believe that people older than 16 need to buy a fishing license in order to fish. Barring reasons to doubt these people, their statements give you reason to believe that anyone over 16 will need to buy a fishing license. There are also cases in which what people believe actually determines the truth of a claim. For example, the truth of claims about manners and proper behavior might simply depend on what people believe to be good manners and proper behavior. Another example is the case of community standards, which are often taken to be the standards that most people accept. In some cases, what violates certain community standards is taken to be obscene. In such cases, for the claim X is obscene to be true is for most people in that community to believe that X is obscene. In such cases it is still prudent to question the justification of the individual beliefs. See also appeal to popularity. Examples of appeal to belief. At one time, most people in Europe believed that the Earth was the center of the solar system. At least most of those who had beliefs about such things. Dot. However, this belief turned out to be false. God must exist. After all, I just saw a poll that says 85% of all Americans believe in God. Of course there is nothing wrong with drinking. Ask anyone, he ll tell you that he thinks drinking is just fine. Description of appeal to common practice. The appeal to common practice is a fallacy with the following structure. X is a common action. Therefore X is correct, moral, justified, reasonable, etc. 
The basic idea behind the fallacy is that the fact that most people do X is used as evidence to support the action or practice. It is a fallacy because the mere fact that most people do something does not make it correct, moral, justified, or reasonable. An appeal to fair play, which might seem to be an appeal to common practice, need not be a fallacy. For example, a woman working in an office might say the men who do the same job as me get paid more than I do, so it would be right for me to get paid the same as them. This would not be a fallacy as long as there was no relevant difference between her and the men. In terms of ability, experience, hours worked, etc. Closing parenthesis. Dot. More formally. It is common practice to treat people of type Y in manner X and to treat people of type Z in a different manner. There is no relevant difference between people of type Y and type Z therefore people of type Z should be treated in manner X, too.